especially tonight for our viewing audience. As always, in our sincere prayer that you will speak to us tonight, Father, clearly and concisely. God, let faith come alive in our hearts. We bless you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we do pray. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, let's get ready. Let's get right into the word. Glory to God. I'm already warmed up. Hebrews chapter number four. Hebrews the fourth chapter. Hebrews the fourth chapter. That's fine. That's an amber alert. That's all. Get a stop. Hebrews the fourth chapter. Want to look at verse number two. Hebrews the fourth chapter. Look at verse number two. When you're there, say I have it. All right, come on, class. Let's read verse two together. Come on, ready, read. For unto us was the gospel preached. Okay, y'all, y'all got it. I wait. Hebrews four. Look at verse number two. Hebrews chapter four. Look at verse number two. Hebrews four. Look at verse number two. You got it. Ready, read. Come on. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Want to jump on part three of our list, lesson entitled, The Word Mixed with Faith. Come on, class, say the word, the word. mixed with faith. Come on, say it again, say the word, the word. mixed with faith. We have been in, in this series dealing with the word mixed with faith because we must understand that if we are going to become productive in the kingdom of God. We have to be more than just a church that's always naming and claiming it. We have to move beyond blabbing and grabbing, but we must be a church that is actively pursuing the promise of God. Because if you and I just simply sit back and say, I am waiting on God, I promise you, you're going to get absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, I almost, I almost want to ask you how many of you all have been saying your confessions since Sunday. And I pray that you have. But if you have not been saying your confessions since Sunday, no wonder faith for you is not working. Because, listen, in order for faith to work, you and I have to first learn how to follow instructions. Come on, class, say follow instructions. Now, when you look over in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, don't turn there. I'll tell you what it says. Over in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, is uh, referred to as the Hall of Faith, where it talks about Abraham, and talks about Sarah, and it talks about all these faith patriarchs that got the job done for the kingdom of God. Let me ask you all, how many of you all want to be a faith patriarch? Right. Amen. Right. I want to be a faith patriarch that will show that we actually got the job done. But here is the one thing I really want you to see. That these patriarchs in the hall of faith are more than just people who believe God, but watch this, write this down, they obeyed God. All right, they all believed right. God and they obeyed God. Come on, class, say they, they believed and obeyed. Understand, it, it does you no good. Bring, bring me down some, please, a little bit. It does you no good. It does us no good. Thank you. Just to say, I believe. I can believe that McDonald's is down the street. All right. I don't care how hungry I am. I can say I believe it down the street. If I don't do what it takes to go and get some food from McDonald's, my believing does me no good. Right. And you have right. Christians, Mr. Gina, who are always saying, I believe God can do this, and I believe God can do that. And it's easy for us to confess what God can do, but the Bible is clear when it says faith without works. Come on, class, is what? Yeah is dead. And you have many Christians who are saying what they believe, but there's no proof of how they believe. All right. All right. Let me see if I can bring it right where you live. Many of us, if you had a job, have a job, or want to get a job, you will not get a check All right. if you don't go to work. All right. All right. Especially with our messed up economy, I don't know any company that's giving out good little checks just because they like you. Come on, if you know what a company is, let me know. I'm going to apply tomorrow. <laughs> but understand, they want you to come to work, put your time in before they give you your first check. As a matter of fact, most companies are going to make you work twice the time. Right. So that when it's all said and done, they owe you, not you owe them. All right. right? But listen.
listen, God says, if you, if you have faith, if you have faith, watch this now, God says to put your actions behind what you believe. And this is vital, you all, for the, the survival of the Christian. Because one of the reasons the enemy is successfully winning the challenge uh, uh, in our Christian life is because we have bought into this ideology of step back, let God do it. Right. We sit back on our blessed assurance, and we keep saying, I'm waiting on God to do. And God says, I've already done what I'm going to do. God says, I will work with you if you do something. See, watch this, and I believe I talked this last week, maybe before last, that there is a law in the earth called seed time harvest, right? And, and so it simply says, I must do something in order to receive a harvest. Right. I'm not sure about you, but I have never gone in my backyard and said, I want a collard greens, and collard greens came out of the ground. Right. Come on, all my collard green ears. Come on, I, I've never wanted mustard and turnips and said, Father, I want green to come out of the ground, and God gave me mustard and turnips. No. If there, where there is no seed or no investment of my time, there is no return. Somebody, please help me out. Why do Christians think that we can do nothing and just wait on God to, to serve us hand and feet? Remember, you all, God has it all. You are still the servants. And God has required us. See, when you look at the Hall of Faith, everyone... In the hall of faith, God worked alongside of them. See, Moses could not have brought the children of Israel out of bondage had not he made a decision to start leading them out. Right? Abraham could not have been a father of faith had not Abraham obeyed God and left, his, uh, left Mesopotamia. And so everybody God used in the hall of faith, Rahab the harlot could not have been spared had not she first spared the two spies. Right? And so when you look in the hall of faith, everybody in the hall of faith put their actions, they put their, they put, they put actions to how they believe. And understand, if you and I do not put actions to how we believe, I promise you, you're going to spend your whole life as a Christian waiting on God. All right. All right. As a matter of fact, encourage a person by the say, you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Write this down, class. God is waiting for your obedience. Mm -hmm. God is waiting for your obedience. God is waiting for your obedience. I'll say that again. God is waiting on your obedience. If you and I refuse to walk in a level of obedience, hear me, so apparently we cannot blame God for results not happening in our lives when we didn't do what God has told us to do. Right. You see, if God said, go outside in the back of the church, and I have called someone to lose $10,000 in the back of the church by the light pole on the right-hand side. Wow. I right. Let God tell me that. Right. I'm going to keep talking and, and go right outside. Right. Come on, I wish I wish he was telling me. I said, y'all, I'm going to show you how to walk out faith. I'm going right outside to that spot. But see, if I don't do it, some of us wait too long to do it because we want to run it by somebody else hoping they will see what God told you. Right. Understand, you all, God is not going to tell everybody what he told you. Right. And you can't wait on God to confirm it with somebody else when he told you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I will almost go this far. If you don't move until somebody else confirms to you what God told you, then you don't believe God. Oh, let, me, let me give you some Bible. I see y'all face going past the name of the Bible. Jesus says, my sheep. They know my voice. And they do follow me. Not follow somebody else. They follow me. If you ain't known Sister Norto to tell you what God said, then you may hurt God above you. Come on, somebody. If you made Brother Lila above God, then you ain't known, then you made them God over God. And God says, I've been talking to you all this time. How come you won't move? All right. All right. And now we get aggravated at God because we're saying, God, why did you allow this? And God is telling you, it didn't have to come to this had you simply been in the place I assigned you to be. All right. All Are you following me? Right. See, watch this. What would have happened when Israel had Joshua, I'm sorry, had, had, had um, Joseph gotten so angry when his brother 
Philip saw him, he said, you know what? Kill me. I ain't going. Kill me. But God allowed Joseph to be in the right place at the right time, get down to Egypt. So by the time the famine hit, he was already in position to help bring them out of the famine. You see, many of us, the reason God can't do for us what he wants to is because maybe you could be out of position. Are you following me? And so walking by faith says that wherever God instructs me to go, that's where I go. Ooh, can I thank you, Holy Spirit? <laughs> Write this down. You won't, you won't always understand why God said what he said. Come on, you won't always understand why God gave you that instruction. Pastor, how you know? Believe me, I've been there when God said do X, Y, Z. So to Philip, I did it, not knowing why I got to do it, but I know when God said do a thing, God is the one responsible for making things turn out right. Are y'all following your name? And so you won't always understand why God do it. Well, but Pastor, how would I know it's God? Watch this. Write this down. God will never give you anything to do that goes against his word. See, the devil is not going to ever tell you to bless nobody. The devil will never tell you, go and tell them God loves them. Amen. Come on, right. the devil will never tell you, go over there and show some, some, some love. The devil will never tell you that. So you know, you know that you can tell when it's God when it lines up with his word. Amen. Now, watch this. Here then, you all, is God's struggle with us. Watch this. God's biggest problem with us is getting our want to to do what he says. If that's tonight, right. I'm going to shout by myself tonight. Right. God's biggest right. problem with his children is getting us to get our want to to do what he says. Mm -hmm. See, right. Abraham had to make a decision that when God told him to leave his father and his kinfolk and Junebug and, and to queen on them, understand it was a custom for a man or a son to stay in his father's house until he died. Right? He wasn't supposed to leave. You stay there until he died and then pick up where he left off at. But see, you can't put the custom above what God has told you to do. All right. Are you hearing me? All right. you, can't put, you can't put what the custom is. You can't put what we usually do above what God has told you to do. All right. Are you following me, class? And so our job is that when God gives us an instruction, our job is that we have to be willing to follow the instruction even when it contradicts what we generally do. Let's put it right here. That's fine. Are you following me? I'll say it again. We must be willing to follow God's instructions even when it contradicts what we usually do. All right. Let me see. Help y'all out tonight. Oh, y'all get me working hard tonight. If God tells you to give up pork or give up beef, why are you questioning God with God? How come? But God, everybody in your family, God, they be, well, see, first of all, if God ever told you to quit eating certain meat, I guarantee you, folks in your house going to start eating pork chops, pork sausages, pieces with pork on it. Come on, somebody. Let God say give up beef. Boy, the hamburger going to smell real good. Someone can come in and pick a big old patty in your house and have it smelling just good now. And your whole inside going to be like, oh, Lord. Hamburger sure smell good. But uh, see, what God could be doing is dealing with a problem in your digestive system that you don't know about it yet. Yes. And God is simply saying, yes, trust me, even though you don't know it's there, God said, I know it's there. Now, with your smart self, well, well Lord, I'm going to eat it just this one time, Jesus. And now, and now you all clogged up and bagged up. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, you are, you fool up to the throat. Had you simply obeyed God and followed what God told you to do, this problem would not be here. Come on, somebody. What if God, God what if God told you to go, God, God said, every night at 7 o'clock, eat four prunes. Oh, glory to God. Now, I pray he don't tell you to do that. But if you did, baby, go to Jewel and buy you a bag of prunes and start eating them prunes. Come on. Hit the point. God knows better than you what's going on with you. Are you hearing me? See, see, this is why when God says go and 
somebody, you don't know what they may have. God, that person can be a millionaire. You don't know it. And God says, go encourage them. Tell them I love them. But now I look at them, Pastor, they don't look like me. So what? Your job is to follow God. Watch this. They may get saved and bless you with, with some money. Come on, you'd be surprised how folk will feel when they realize they've been spared from a penalty of hell. Come on. Our problem is, you all, sometimes our intellect moves us out the will of God. Come on, you recall Naaman over in Kings. The Bible said, go dip in the Jordan. Naaman, what is smart self? Now, first of all, he already sick. Tell me, why those sick folk fight the hardest? He already sick. He got leprosy. He can't be seen nowhere in public. He's still hanging out like he don't have it. If the king find out, he, he got the killer. Come on. Right. Because now he's been around the king. And so the, the, the word was, go dip. And all of a sudden now, he got an attitude. Dipping like Jordan, what's wrong with that? You mean God can not use the clean water over here? No. God said, follow my instructions. That's where your the blessing comes from. Amen. Your job, my job, is that when God speaks, hear his voice and be bold enough to do what God says in spite of what other folk tell you, well, I don't think that's God. Anybody ever tried to obey God and told somebody? They said, well, I ain't sure if that's God or not. I would rather do something and think it's God than to hear God and do absolutely nothing with it. Amen. All right. All right. See, Pastor, why that? Because, see, if I mess up, the grace of God will cover me if I miss God. But if I do nothing, I put my own self up in the, the wrong position because I won't obey God. Are you following me? All right, all right. And so, when we miss the word, the word of God, with faith, it simply says, we do what we believe. Write this down. Obedience to God's word is part of the walking by faith process. Obedience to God's word is part of the walking by faith process. Now, I told you all on last time that walking by faith does, does not mean that you and I are exempt from doing something. Come on, say, I'm not exempt from agreeing with God. Watch this. I told you all earlier that when you hear the voice of God, at least answer. At least answer. You recall the the uh, the, the, uh, the servant over in First Samuel. I'm sorry, no, it, it was Samuel. He says, he says, went to his, his master and said, "Master, you call me?" He said, "No." Went back, back to sleep. Heard him call him again. He got up, "Master, you call me?" He said, "Nope, what me?" Went back over here, back to sleep. Came back again and said, "Did you call me?" He said, tell you what, when you hear it again, you said, you tell the Lord, yes, Lord, I'm here. I'm listening to you. Went back to sleep, and he heard it again. He says, speak, Lord, thou servant here. And watch this, when he told God, I am listening, that's when God gave him an instruction. Could it be the reason God cannot give you an instruction because you ain't listening? Would you encourage the person by them and say, you got to be listening to God? Hear me, family, we have to, the Bible says, uh, he didn't have an ear. Let him hear. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't mean these ears. But it means, I'm going to give you the earlier version. He whose heart is open to hear from God. Right. Let him hear. Watch this, what the Spirit has to say. Which means that the Spirit is talking. Yes. But if not listening, he can be talking all he wants to. Right? right. And so, Understand our job, what, what we, we want to do is get results. Now, most of us, you all, are like, like the, 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 uh, the man in John chapter 5. You know, that's the guy who was over there at the pool. The Bible said he was with a bunch of impotent folks. <laughs> okay, it says impotent folks. Sick folk, not impotent. They're impotent. Maybe they were sick, or as Pussy said, they were lame, 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 lame and crazy. Over there, folk got all kinds of diseases over there, and everybody is gathering around the pool. Now, watch this. You know, if you get a bunch of sick folks on the same floor, 
Everybody looking forward, looking forward to one thing, dying. Now, look, oh, that's not like me. Now, watch this. Here it is. This man, 38 years, Jesus been at the pool. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He was at the pool, right? Mm -hmm. Here comes Jesus said, he says, he says, will thou be made whole? Now, for 38 years, this man been in the same place. He come to his, he said, I have no one to put me in the pool. Now, watch this. You got to see his mindset. He says, what I don't have is somebody to do for me what I need to do. I want somebody else to come and put me in the pool. Now, watch this. So, the Bible said he was lame. It didn't say his hands wasn't working. I can lay on the ground and drag myself anywhere in the place I want to. Come on. Push up and scoop. He could have scooted him to the edge of the pool. But watch this. It is possible to be in the same position so long that your mind may say you want to, but your heart says there's no hope. All right. All right. Right? I'm pressing how you know. Because this man could have said, well, Lord, you can do it. Watch this. He put the blame on somebody else. Okay. Which right. means it is possible to, to have in your head, I want the miracle, but blame somebody else for not getting it. Listen, if you don't get your miracle, you can't blame the preacher because you didn't get a miracle. Maybe you didn't want one. Come on. You know, you know what? <laughs> oh, God, I want to say this right. I've known folk who were on general assistance, who had jobs offered to them. But when they realized that getting a job means having assistance cut, they said, nope, I just keep on getting my check. Now watch this. Here's something even crazier. I've seen folk who, who were getting, uh, uh, what's it called now? Security checks. Because they were injured. SSI. Thank you. Getting a disability check, and when you ask them did they want to be healed, they said no, because if I get healed, that means they'll cut my check off. Now how many folk in that, in that, that's some stinking thinking? Come on. But you'll be surprised why many people don't get their deliverances, not because God is not working, but because their mindset says, if I change here, i got to change, watch this, my only source. Right. Now, hit my thinking. Do you think that if God healed my body, that God won't give me a job too? All right. All right. All right. If God provides... If, if God opened my eyes, you think God won't have, give me give me something to do now that I have my eyes open again? Come on, if God put me out of a wheelchair, you think God won't give me something where, where now I can use my hands and my legs? Come on, to help about myself and my family? God will not leave, will, will not heal you and then leave you in the poorhouse. That makes no sense. Are you following me? And so we then have to get our want to in line with the will of God. Come on, and say, Lord, Lord help, me help me get my want to, my want to in line my with the will of God. Write this down. Faith is responding to God as though you believe he has your answer. Faith is responding to God as though you believe he has your answer. Ooh, that was a good one. Shut by myself. Right. Faith right. is responding to God as you, though you believe he has your answer. Let me ask you tonight, how do y'all believe that God has your answer? Yes. All right, all right. Just somebody say, he has my answer. Yes. Now watch this. If God then in fact has your answer, and he does, then the question is, what are you going to do with what he says? All right. Let me see if I can go in for a minute and take a little sidebar. Why do folks... Oh, help me, Jesus. Why do folk who need money keep fighting tithe? Why do, why do broke folk keep fighting giving? You hang out with folk who are rebellious and don't want to give, don't want to tithe, and listen to them. Watch this. They're broke. Why in the blessed God world would I hang out with somebody who broke and they are purposely not obeying God when it comes to Tithe and offering, but I'm asking you, should I tithe? Something there is wrong. 
Are you following me, Chris? Right. Watch this. Hey, hey, listen, if you are broke, broke than the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments you don't have no business asking God to bless you. You are a thief. Would you fight somebody and say, are you a thief? Some of y'all are scared. Look him in the face. Come on, look at him, look at him, look at him. See, see, look, see, look, see, look, see, look. See, 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 see. watch this. You can tell when they're lying, they blink, they blink your face. Come on, my eyes water. Look at him again, look at him again. Say, are you, are you a thief? Ask him, are you a thief? Boy, see, I'm going to get it. Oh, I ain't, I ain't going to blink. I ain't going to blink. Come on. Listen, you can't stick me. You can't stick me up and ask me for money. Come on, something is wrong with you in the head. Come on, bless me, Lord, bless me indeed. But you're robbing God. And why are we still preaching on tithing and offering when the believers we know what to do? We know it's right. See, what this tithing to God is not about not being cursed. It's about trusting God. And I can tell folk who don't trust God because you won't tie. And God said, that's the reason you can't get ahead. Because if I can't trust you with 10 cents out of $8, I know I can give you 100000 Come on. Maybe, maybe I'm in the wrong house. How many of y'all could use 100000 right now? And rip your line. Put your hand up. Glory to God. I need a couple of 100000 praise the Lord. Come on. But if God can't trust you to give $1 out of $10 and 10 out of 100 come on, 100000 that's $10,000. Right. Now, that's see, as long as, long as, as long as it was a dime, it look, it's manageable. Right. Right. <laughs> Somebody said, I know that's right. I know that's right. See, 10, <laughs> 10 cents look manageable because you can't hide by, can't hide by, by penny candy. With a dime. Now, you, 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 you know it's bad when you can't buy penny candy with a dime. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, somebody. But come on. Man, you're going to fall apart at the more time. You got $10,000? Come on. Isn't the man how the devil makes it look so large? Well, Pastor, I got my bill. My. my my bills are all due, and my baby needs shoes, and I'm busted. <laughs> all right. You go always be busted. All right. All right. Come on, somebody. Listen, I learned something that I remember trust God. Listen, I see. If I had not had not seen God do it, I would question it. But I've seen God stretch my money. Come on, I've seen God open doors when I, when I thought I was out of money. I've seen God do it. Are oh, you hearing me? Come on, I've seen God call folk to give me money. When, listen, the only person who knew I was broke was me and Lady Carol. And I, didn't, and I wasn't going to tell her, but she asked for money. So I had to tell her because I ain't got no money right now. <laughs> come on. And I've seen God. Come on, I'm serious. And I've seen God come through. This is why, listen, this is why I don't care what God asked me for. I don't have a problem when God asked me for some money. Right. Are you following right. me? Right. You know why? Because he has never let me down. Right. I heard folks say, I ain't seen God fail yet. Where that yet come from? I've never seen God fail me. And guess what? I don't ever believe he gonna fail me. Right? And so our job, y'all, is to put ourselves in position where we trust God and watch this now, put our actions in line with what the word of God says. Amen. And I told you before, but I'm going to say it again. Quit asking God to speak to your spirit when you can't even obey the written word. All right. All right. Are you hear me? I'm surprised by the number of Christians who say, God, speak to me. He said, I've been speaking to you. The preacher preached Sunday. He preached Wednesday night. All that right. was me talking, but you wouldn't listen. All right. All right. You thought he talking about me. God said, no, I was talking to you. All right. All right. You know, folks say, folks say, why the preacher pick
picking on me. Now you know you didn't tell me you wasn't tithing. Come on. I have one, I have one rule. What's the bottom line? Can we make budget this week? That's all I want to know. Okay? Because you know what? Hey, my reality. If if you don't want, 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 want to be blessed, it's on you. I can't make you want to be blessed. Right? If you want to live under a curse system, I can't make, make you tired. Well, if God can't make you do it, I can't make, make, make you do it. Listen, if you want to stay in the hole, stay in the hole. Come on. I, I move on. And so, faith is responding to God as though you believe he has the answer. Now, the, the, the operative word here I want to use is responding and believe. Responding, I'm going to those, responding and believe. Responding and believe. Because you won't respond to it if you don't believe it. Come on, class. You won't respond to it if you don't believe it. Faith is responding to God as though you believe he has the answer. Now, let me ask you to make sure I'm the right class. How many of y'all believe that God has your answer? He does. Now, go to Mark chapter 2. I want to give you, I'm going to try to run through it in the next 20 minutes. Okay, 25 minutes. Okay, maybe 30. I'm going to try to skip over some of this because I have a whole lot to give you. And I make it what you make me to give it to you. Now, over in Mark, the second chapter, we see Jesus coming you all back to Capernaum. And the word on the street was that the man who just finished casting out devils and healing the sick had just come back home. And the people were all filled with expectation. And Jesus now came through for them because of their faith. Now you find that in, in, in Mark the, uh, uh, the first chapter. Now in Mark chapter two, the Bible says, "And again he entered into Capernaum after some days." Now watch this clap. It says he was what? It said it was what? It was noise that he was where? Are you on Mark chapter two? It said it was noise that he was in the house. In other words, now it was rumored and the word spreading everywhere. That this man, this miracle worker, had just came back home. Right. He had just came back to his house. And you know like I do, that when you hear about something good or somebody who's done something great, come back home, you want to be there to greet them, especially if you have a need. Yes. Right. Let me see right. if I can come right down your road. Right. Let me find out that when the started won the lottery. <laughs> I don't believe she played. But let me find out that she won a lot of them. Mm -hmm. That big one. All right. Man, unless my car run out of gas, I'm going to call an Uber or a Lyft. But I'm going to her house. Because right. rumor had it, she won a lot of me. All right. Now, this is just for the purpose of, of uh, illustration. Mm -hmm. Now, understand, when you read Mark, the first chapter, you see where Jesus was healing all kind of folk. Folks who were lame, folks who were sick, who were who diseased, those who had all kinds of infirmities. He healed all those folk. And then he left town and came back to town. All right. Now, here's who came to visit him. All the folk who were sick. All right. Because if this Jesus, who is Mary's baby, Joseph's son, the carpenter, if he has all this power, he's going out of town healing folks, he's coming in town healing folks, he's going back out of town healing folks. When he come back home, guess what? I'm going to his house. All right. Because watch this. If he has a pattern, a history of healing folk, and I'm sick, I'm going to where he is. All right. All I'm going to give you all another sidebar. See, when the word get out that folk getting healed, up in here, well, folks, listen, listen, oh dear God, I wish, I, I wish right. the tape was off right now. Man, I, I got word on the night that there have been testimonies after testimonies of folk getting healed just from Friday night service. All right, all right. All right. I mean, I, don't get, I mean, I was told face to face about the folks who, I mean, folk just got delivered on Friday night. Yeah. 
Listen, even during our confession, I mean, I got a testimony, I believe it was today, Tuesday or Wednesday, I think either Monday or Tuesday, how folk getting delivered already based on confession for two days. All right. Now watch this. What do you think is going to happen when the word get out that if you want a miracle, come and see FFC? Come on, we're going to need Pastor Mars and security to be here to open the doors up. Because if the miracles are happening up in here, folk want to be in here to get their shot at the miracle. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Listen, I prophesy in this house that this will be a place of signs, wonders, and miracles that folk will come from around the neighborhood and around the world to get up in here and get a miracle in their life. Glory to God. Amen. And so it was wrong with you all that this miracle worker had just come home. Now watch this. So here's the question. What were they saying about Jesus that caused others to notice? When the word got out, somebody had to be spreading the word. Watch this now. Somebody had to be telling somebody. I'm going to change the word here. Somebody was out soul wanting, telling somebody else where to come get their miracle. All right. All right. All right. Y'all missed that. Right. See, watch this. All of us know somebody who needs a miracle somewhere. Yes. Yes. Our job is to get them to come here and watch this. When they come with expectation, God gives the miracle because of their expectation. Yes. Right. Have you ever asked the question why some folk get it and some folk don't? Watch this. Some folk come to just spectate uh -huh. while some come with expectation. Those who come to spectate, watch this, all they get is a performance. But those who come with expectation, come and get their miracle. Listen, whenever I step foot up in God's house, I don't ever come to spectate. When I put my feet up in God's house, I come in expectation that God, if you're saying anything, say it to me. If you're healing anybody, God, heal me. If anybody get a breakthrough, God, I'm the one who wants the breakthrough. Because watch this. Here's my reality. If, 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 I'm preaching, y'all. Boy, slow down. Here's my reality. If you're sick and I'm sick, I probably care more about my sickness than you. All right. All right. All right. Can y'all be, be real, folks? Come on. All right. All right. If I'm in pain and you in pain, I promise you my mind is really on my pain. Yes. Come on. Let your, let your bunions start hurting. Come on, go. Somebody come on, pray the Lord. I'm going to wave my hand. But I ain't jumping. Because my bunion hurt. All right. But watch All this. Right. If I come for a miracle, yes, and the word says, everybody thought praising God. Listen, if I am believing for a miracle, I'm going to jump as high as I can. Yes, if it hurt, I'm going to jump with whatever I'm working with. Because yes. if I come looking for a miracle, God will meet me at the point of my yes. expectation. Are you following me? Amen. Right. And y'all want to thank you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we talk ourselves out the blessing. Are you hearing me? Listen, you think sometimes I've been places and I didn't feel like shouting, I didn't feel like hollering. I want to sit there and be quiet. <laughs> but watch this. There was a need that made me respond to the command. All right. All right. There was a need that made me respond to the command. See, if if my legs are hurting, and uh, the, the command is, everybody get up and just praise God with all you can where you are. Right. Even if it hurts, I'm going to praise God, thank you, Jesus, praise you, Lord, and watch it. I'll praise my way through to a healing. All right. All right now. But if the devil tells you, you hurt too bad, sit down and be still. You're going to go home hurt. All right. All right. Come on. And for me, for me, I don't like it when I'm sick, the person by me is sick, and they get healed. All right now, say that. See, if I pass my money on your road, and I give you some money, give you some money, if I don't give you some, you got a problem to pass tonight. All right, all right. I, I, I know I'm telling the truth. All right. Especially if I skipped you and gave Pastor Mark some money. Now, you may not say it, but you be like, what's going on here? You didn't see me see my hand? All 
Why ain't you skip me? And you know, like, I know the devil's going to talk to you from 9 to Sunday. Come on. But watch this. When God gives a command, hear me, when God gives a prophetic utterance, our job is to respond to what God says in spite of how things look or watch this, in spite of what folks going to say. Amen. Are you following me? And so here it is. The word was on the street, you all, the hideous man is, who is, who is healing people. And the Bible said, they begin to tell others. Yes. Watch this, y'all. I can hear him. Hey, y'all, Jesus is coming. 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 Where he at? He coming. Here he, he come. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Where he going? To Capernaum. Wait, wait, creep back. Over there in Capernaum. Watch this. Instead of going to meet him, let's go to his house first. Amen. That's right. All right. All right. Come on. All right. Come on. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus, psst, you sick? Jesus is coming. He's coming home. Jesus is coming. And everybody in the house was filled with expectation. Yes, Lord. Yes. I have a question. I wonder. If I'm wrong, somebody help me out. Use your, the your, your theology field mind to help me out. I wonder what would happen if everybody would come to church with expectation that God's going to do something for me today. Because sometimes, if, 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 if you ever just stop praising God and watch folk on Sunday, you'd be surprised that folk are like, I ain't, I ain't raising my hand. I ain't getting involved in praising and worship. All right. They ain't even right. singing my song. I don't, I don't even feel Jesus. I don't like what you sing no way. Listen, baby, I don't care who's singing. I don't care right. who my deliverance come through. I came for a deliverance yes. in my life. Come on, it don't have to be my song, and I don't even have to know the words. Because if I came for a deliverance, God will meet me. Watch this, and I don't care who God meets me through. Amen. 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 Right. And so watch this. The Bible says in verse 2, And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. All right. Man, they had a All full right. house, y'all. Amen. Yeah. Watch this. It was probably a Bible class night. <laughs> All right, man. That's it. That's it. There, there was no room to receive him. Watch this. No, not so much as about to the about the door. And he watch this now. Watch this. And he preached the word to them. Yes. This is why y'all it's important that folks come get the word. Amen. See, you know what? Right. I've learned to not be moved by the crowd Amen. because I can tell the core group of, of our, our church on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. I can tell the folks who are going to pray by Wednesday night. All right. I can tell All the right. folks who breathe the word by Wednesday night because those are the ones who come for the instructions. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones who come to find out what is God saying for our next move. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones who come on Wednesday night. Right. Um, the Sunday folks come. Right. Pastor, it's Sunday. I, I'm supposed to be here. Are you following me? Watch, look around and see and see your core group. See, this here is your core group. These are the ones you call if you need a prayer, a breakthrough. You call these folks here. These are the ones who spend time digging in God's word. These are the ones, watch this, who pray for your pastor. If you don't, you should be praying for your pastor. Glory to God. But you know what's this? The Bible said Jesus preached the word to them. Watch this. Jesus understood if he could get them the word, mm -hmm. then they would know how to go to God for themselves after he was gone. All right. All right. All right. This is why I push you all. I'm not saying don't call pastor, but I'm saying learn how to be independent and go to God for yourself. I'm not saying you can't be on the prayer line with your 20 buddies, but, but 19 of them don't have no faith at all, no way. All right. Jesus. All right. See, I can tell where your faith is by how you pray. Mm -hmm. all right. And most folks pray begging God and pleading God, come on, Jesus, hurry up, Jesus, we're waiting, Jesus. Boy, if, if Jesus would ever respond to that message, he'd probably say, I'm already here, stupid. I've been here a long time, dummy. What you waiting for? To see my faith retarded. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But come on. Think about it. We pray some of the worst prayers. I'm not saying y'all, because y'all been, been taught how to pray. But come on. Come by 
here, good Lord. Come out and do what? Come by here implies he's not here now. Come on. We're waiting on you, Lord, implies he's somewhere trying to, trying to get what you're asking him for. I wish somebody, <laughs> oh, oh, y'all quiet that boy, what happened? Who been praying? Come by here, the Lord. Come by here. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Woo, I'm going to have a prayer one, Pastor Mark. We're having a prayer one on one class. Come on. And so, watch this. Jesus now, see, this is why you, you have to be sensitive to, to God because Jesus knew he only had a set amount of time mm -hmm. to be with them. And he understood that if I don't train them to go to God, they'll always be depending on me. All right. All right. And Jesus, you all made it clear. He says, he said, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, that he will give to you. Come on. What the, if you're praying, oh dear God, I'm going to yell on. So the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing. So then faith cometh by hearing. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hear this now. So then faith Cometh by hearing. Come on now, don't miss this. Faith cometh by hearing. It will suggest to me that if I don't have faith, then maybe I'm not getting enough word. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Wherever there is a faith deficit, there is a word deficit. Because if God said, Tracy, faith come by hearing, and I have a faith deficit, my deficit of faith is simply because there is no word in my heart. All right. All right. And so what gives me faith in God is to hear a word from God. All right. Yes. All right. And so now we understand why God's folks are having faith failures. Mm -hmm. Because they have no word. Listen, if you really go to a party and come to church, you you be a, a faith figure your whole life. I know, that's right. All right. A pastor, I'm too tired to come to church tonight. I work hard. I work hard today too, but I'm here. Amen. But you, the pastor, you you need a miracle, a, a miracle in your life. All right. Come on, you broke. All right. Come on, you still living you still living way beneath your privilege. And so somebody has to preach a word of faith to get your life changed. But when God is serving a meal and you don't eat it, watch this, your portion of faith can't come because you didn't catch the word. All right. All Ooh, right. And, and can I go here? Mr. Jenner, watch this. Most folks don't even invest to buy a CD or DVD mm -hmm. to hear it over and over and over again. All right. All See, right. we think the Bible said faith come as a result of having heard. How many folk know that it is possible to be in the same room and you can hear a voice but miss what was said? Come on. That's why in college they had us take notes, bring a pad. But see, I had one of those what things called recorders because I knew that somebody was going to walk up in front of me, somebody going to go psst. And distract me. Somebody gonna say, "Can I borrow a pencil?" And I miss five minutes of what been taught. All right. Can I give you a pencil? Cause you know it's not just give me a pencil. So how you doing today? Shut up. <laughs> Come on. And you know, like I do in church, folk like to distract you in church. All right. And so watch this, y'all. I'm the messenger, and I I go back and hear my own self preach. You know why? Because faith come by hearing. Yeah, right. Faith come by hearing. Yes. And watch this. I want my faith to grow as well. Yeah. And so it means that if my faith is going to grow, it is going to push me to action. Somebody got to tell me what God is talking about. Yeah. So now I can respond, watch this, intelligently based on the, the word that I know. All right? I move on. 
um, write this down. The Word of God gives us positive proof concerning God's position, oh dear God, on any situation. I'm going to say that again. The Word of God gives us positive proof concerning God's position on any situation. I'm going to give it to you again. The Word of God gives us positive proof concerning God's position on any situation. Watch this. If you are suffering with a, a sickness or a disease or an illness in your body, the question is not, can I be healed? The question is, what, what is God's position concerning this thing in my life? All right, all right. See, if you don't understand my position, oh, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We had a primary election on yesterday. Most of y'all voted. I guarantee you that you have no clue what the position is of the carriers you voted for. But you voted for them because the names sound good. Some because they were the same color you were. Some because they were the same gender you were. But watch this. Let me ask you about their agenda. You have no clue. But watch this. You won't believe God or trust God if you don't understand his position concerning what you're going through. See, by his stripes does me no good just being in the Bible. All right. When I'm sick, I need to understand that God's position concerning my sickness is that by his stripes I'm healed. Now watch this. That's God's position. Right? And so God says, you are healed by my son's stripes. That's what that's that's God's position concerning your life. All right, all right. But now, if you don't know that, the devil, I promise you, will come and give you another word that contradicts the word of God. All right, all right. Because you know, when you're in pain, the devil talks to you real loud. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you having trouble in your house? The devil talks to you real loud. Come on. All right. The devil, you are, is a master of controversy. And his job is to catch you at a weak moment when you're having trouble in your house, in your life, when your money is funny. Now he talks to lies and tell you, see, if God loves you. Besides me, anybody ever had an if God love you moment? Yes. Amen. This is why when you're in trouble, you better know God loves me. Yes. Listen, John 3.16 is not just a good scripture to know. When the devil tells you God don't love you, oh, devil, wait a minute, I read it too late. For God so loved the world. <laughs> Guess what? I'm part of the world. Thank God I wasn't born on Mars. God loved this world. Come on, somebody. You need to know that God loves you. Especially when your life is in trouble. And so, the word of God then Give me positive proof. Sister Philip, every time I read God's word, that's my evidence. Hebrews said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence, the positive proof of things not seen. Faith in God's word is my proof. Watch this. It's like your American Express card. Whenever things get tough, I go to the Word of God and watch this. Even though I don't see it in the natural, mm -hmm. the Word of God pays for it on credit. Right. All right. All right. Now. I'm in the wrong church tonight. Oh. All right. See, if Jesus has already paid for it, and He has, Amen. which means then my trust has got to be in what He said. And watch this, his position as it pertains to my life. All right, all right. See, the Bible says God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. All right. Watch this, God wants you more than just being holy and shouting around the church. All right, all right. Come on. God wants you healed. He wants you blessed. He wants you happy at home. He wants you happy at work. Now, being a Christian does not mean you don't have controversy. Amen. But being a Christian means that even in the middle of the controversy, because I'm saved, I can pull down on the peace of God. All right, now. Are you following me? All right. That's part of being a Christian. That's part of your inheritance. Yeah. That's part of the promise of God. He said, I'll give you peace that pass all understanding. All right. All right. Somebody 
Bible says it's part of my birthright. It's part of my birthright. I gotta move, I gotta move. Romans 3 and 4 says this. It says, Let God be true and every man be a liar. Come on, class, say, let God be true, and every man be a liar. Now, watch this. Back, back here in our text, in uh, Mark chapter 2, verse 3, it says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, mm -hmm. which was carried by four. Now, watch this. Write this down. Here is where the power of agreement comes into play. The power of agreement comes into play. The power of agreement comes into play. Have you noticed that the enemy is always trying to keep us from agreeing? He is always stirring up controversy to keep us from agreeing. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? The enemy does not want you and I to ever get on the same page, watch this, not only with each other, but with God. And so, watch this. The Bible says, had one man who was sick of the palsy, but watch this now, he got four other men mm -hmm. to agree with him all right. All right, all right. to get a miracle. I wonder, can you find four friends? All right. Oh, God, my time is gone. I wonder, can you find four friends? Ask the person by say, can I count on you to help me get a miracle? Oh, dear God, y'all. My time is all going. Give God, I'm, I'm done. Give God a hand, praise. I'm, I'm through. Give God a hand, praise. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Woo, I'll tell you, one of these days, 